What's going on, everybody? My name is Welcome back to another video. And today, guys, today we're going to get into the function of political boundaries. So, this is a two part video. The first one is the general function of political boundaries, and then the next one is a specific example called United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea, which is basically water boundaries. So, if you want to watch that video, there's a link in the description down below. Uh, but we're going to get started with this one. So, political boundaries can serve as cultural divisions, ethnic divisions, and national divisions. So, they can serve to divide cultures. Uh, different types of development and wealth for nations. And we see this a lot on our modern political map. So cultural divisions, an example could be our consequent boundaries, which are created for cultural reasons. So the uh, breakup of Yugoslavia created many nation states and their boundaries coincided to where the cultures were, where the nations were. And an example of this is also the regions in the United Kingdom. We see uh, the Welsh people, the, Brit the British people, the Scottish people, and the Irish people. We also see economic divisions. An example of this is special economic zones, which we'll learn more about in Unit 7. And this is where there's different laws uh, for trade in a certain part of the country to boost economic and attract foreign direct investment. So laws can be laws can have boundaries. So in certain areas, you can see certain laws. You can see certain special economic zones uh, impacting uh, development, growth, and wealth, and GDP. Another example is United States and Mexico border. So we see a lot of more a lot more wealth in the United States than in Mexico. Uh, that is pretty noticeable, also based off our cities as well. And then we have our national divisions, so nation states. So uh, Yugoslavia is another example. Uh, they separate the nations with their own nation states. Uh, the states in North America. So we see the Americans and the Canadians and uh, Mexicans. Uh, and the other other countries in North America, those separate the nations as well. So we have seen here different ways that political boundaries have served uh, to function different types of divisions. Now let's go into some more different types of boundaries. And these are the way boundaries are shown. So the first one is going to be uh, defined boundaries. And these defined just means definition and it's established by a legal document or treaty. So an example of this is United States and Canada Treaty. It tells us where the boundaries uh, between the United States and Canada is. And then the Berlin Conference, that legal agreement uh, in 1884 to 1885 determined who got what in Africa. Uh, and then the North and South Korea is a uh, demilitarized zone. So these policies in demilitarized zones are defined boundaries because the demilitarized zone is the outcome of the Korean War. Uh, so, yeah, it's pretty, pretty cool. And it serves to divide the two political entities uh, as the outcome of the war. We have delimited boundaries, which are boundaries drawn on a map. So we can see Uganda, literally everything that is drawn on a map is a delimited boundary. And after delimiting a boundary, it's hard to contest it or change it. Boundaries are often contested. Uh, sometimes regions are contested because they can be vernacular. So people might say they start somewhere else, but they really don't. Uh, so yeah, uh, pretty, pretty interesting. And then we have demarcated boundaries, which are just our physical boundaries. So, welcome to town signs, or welcome to state sign, welcome to Missouri. That's a demarcated boundary. It tells you you are now in a different entity. And then room numbers. So, if you go to school and you see, like, your different room numbers on the doors, uh, that tells you you're entering a new place that is a boundary uh, into a new classroom. So, we just learn about different types of boundaries. Uh, now, how does the demilitarized zone in Korea influence interaction and slash or national and regional identities? That's a lot there. Let's go through this individually. So interaction. Uh, we can see here most boundaries discourage interaction because sometimes, like the demilitarized zone, it can be hard to get into the other country and talk to the people there. Uh, however, it increases regional and national identity because uh, the regional identity between the North and South Koreans are stronger because you can't get into the other country and their culture from North Korea is hard to use and not wanted in South Korea. National identity for the Korean nation, though, uh, can be increased, but also cannot be increased because there's that division there between the Koreans. So we could see culturally distinct Koreans in their culture uh, as an outcome of this. And that's the end of the video. I said this is a pretty easy video, I hope, at the beginning. And this was a very easy video. Uh, so there's the unclosed video in the description about, down below, like I said earlier. Uh, go check that out or my other suggested videos or any of my other AP Human videos. Please like, subscribe, really tell me how it's free, change my light or on. I'll see you guys in the next video though. Adios.